Alexius, it's time to answer for your crimes. And here you are, finally. I knew you would appear again, not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. What do you mean? What's ending? <laughs> the irony that you should appear now of all the possibilities. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, and what have I wrought? Ruin and death, that is nothing else. The Outer One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix. That's Felix. Make his breath, Alexius. What have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. Hand over the amulet and we let him go. Let him go and I swear you'll get what you want. I want the world back. <laughs> no. No! to die, didn't he? All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. I know you cared for him. Once he was a man to whom I compared all others. Sad, isn't it? This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! The Elder One! You have to hurry. This is bad. We'll hold the main door. Once they break through, it's all you, Nightingale. I can't let you kill yourself for me. There must be another way. Look at us. We're already dead. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have hours. Though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! <laughs>
You'll have to do better than that. Put aside all claim to Redcliffe, and we let you live. You won. There is no point extending this charade, Felix. It's going to be all right, Father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Glad that's over with. Or not. Grand Enchanter, imagine how surprised I was to learn you'd given Redcliffe Castle away to a Tevinter Magister. King Alistair. Especially since I'm fairly sure Redcliffe belongs to Arl Tegan. Your Majesty, we never intended... I know what you intended. I wanted to help you. But you've made it impossible. You and your followers are no longer welcome in Ferelden. But we have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? I should point out that we did come here for mages to close the breach. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? I know you are a mage, but consider how these rebels have acted. They must be conscripted, not coddled. I've known a lot of mages. They can be loyal friends if you let them. Friends who make bad decisions, but still loyal. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. We'll discuss this later. I'll pray that the rest of the Inquisition honors your promise then. The Breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. I'd take that offer if I were you. One way or another, you're leaving my kingdom. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. It's not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. Give them their freedom for now. If they prove later they can't handle it, impose restrictions. And how many lives will be lost if they fail? With the veil broken, the threat of possession. You were there, Seeker. Why didn't you intervene? While I may not completely agree with the decision, I support it. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the Mage's aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. And here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. Closing the breach will require a lot of magic, and that means lyrium. I have contacts who can help. Contacts meaning smugglers? 
Send them word. We need every advantage. We have legitimate Lyrium supply lines already. And they don't need to hear of this. Keep it under the table, and I'll do what I can to quiet rumors. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. Thank you. I'd be honored to help with the plan. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're... staying? Oh, didn't I mention? The South is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice. But let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. It is good to be surrounded by mages again. Really? The debate, the crackle of magic, the smell of old books. The breach is a magical problem. The mages will help us solve it. Your open support for the mages largely earned you enemies. Our agents will monitor the situation. If the most opposed can be identified, we may still turn this to our advantage. You're not planning assassinations, are you? I was planning to unleash Josephine on them. She kills with kindness. Regardless, I applaud you for the courage to stand up for the mages. In Redcliffe, you sacrificed yourself so that I could return here. Of course I did. One small life in exchange for a second chance at history. I always loved a bargain. It was still a sacrifice, and still noble. And I would do it again. Anything I should know? Altegan has returned to Redcliffe Castle, and resumed his duties as Lord. The people are returning, slowly but surely. Unfortunately, our show of support for the mages has angered many. I'll leave you to your work. Don can have those supplies for you by tomorrow, Quartermaster. It's about damn time. The Mage Rebellion joins the Inquisition. I've got to admit, that's a twist I didn't see coming. One thing you saw in the future worries me. I mean, it was all bad. But Red Lyrium and Ferelden infecting people and growing out of them, that's bad. Finding more of it really punches a hole in my... Red Lyrium at the temple was a coincidence theory. How long does it take for Red Lyrium to grow? How fast can it spread? It took years to infect people in Kirkwall, but no one there was actually ingesting the stuff. This Elder One managed to take the worst thing I can think of and make it worse. That's an accomplishment. We can't leave a single piece of that Lyrium out in the wild. I'm with you on that. I've got people trying to find out where the red stuff came from. I think maybe we should make that a priority. But th that's enough doom and gloom. You just won a big victory for the Inquisition. What are you going to do to celebrate? We can't know what's coming. Best not to get too comfortable. I can't disagree with that. But maybe you should try to relax while you can. Things should be calm around here for at least the next hour. Take a moment to enjoy it. If the world's about to end, I'm sure the Seeker will let us know.
off the Harry. And what are we supposed to do, exactly? What you always do. Complain. We've already spoken with Commander Cullen. No one listens. We want better quarters. We want the Templars kept at a distance. And some respect for... This is not the Circle. You mages are our allies, not our wards. Act like it. How are we supposed to... Deal with it. It never ends, evidently. Is there an issue with the mages? Can I help? The mages are here as equals. They need to get used to what that means. It is your doing, after all. You created this alliance. You would have done differently, I suppose. Oh. I do sound like I'm blaming you, don't I? I don't disapprove. In fact, you did well. You made a decision when it needed to be made. And here we are. I wish I could say this was my doing. We wouldn't be here at all if you hadn't stood up against the Chantry. You're being kind. You're discounting your role in this. Let's close the breach. Then we can say how successful I was. The mages are ready to approach the bridge. I pray this will be enough to close them. You weren't happy with how I brought in the mages. Do you have a problem with me as well? Of course not. I have no intention of endangering your alliance, but I must ensure the safety of those here. That concern extends to the mages. They are putting themselves at risk for the Inquisition, as are you. Any precautions taken are meant to aid you, nothing more. I hope you will accept them as such. Is there anything I should know? Not at present. That's all for now. Another time, then. Is there anything you need? That's enough for now. Another time, then. Nice work at Redcliffe. I could help the mages learn to work with Inquisition soldiers, if you like. <clears throat> Not that the Chief has any apostates in the group. Can you think of any other tasks suitable for the Chargers? The Templars have holed up in Thurin Fall Redoubt. No idea what's happening inside. I could have some of the boys poke around. If nothing else, we'd get a better look at the land. 
We'll talk later. So, that Tevinter guy sent you into the future? Um. Every time I think I understand magic, the rules change. And you're a mage, so that's saying something. Anyway, I hope our new friends have what it takes to close the breach. Damn thing gives me a headache just looking at it. Good day to you. Andraste is gonna close the breach, sir. Not a moment too soon. The little town is filled to bursting. We need to clear out of here and find some place here. Questions, I'm your dwarf. Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Well, that's mages all over. So many robes, I bet all of Ferelden lost their curtains. I'll just be the other side of Haven, just in case. Have you expected something else? We needed this. We needed? No, pretty sure that question was never passed my way. I mean, yay, freedom. Great for them. Over there, away from me. Tell me about yourself. What about me? You're skilled. Who taught you how to use a bow? No one. That seems unlikely. What? I picked it up here and there. Mostly it just makes sense. It's not like that for you. Oh, certainly. Not a day's effort for the naturally gifted like us. Well, it's not like that. It takes work. A bit. Not like Cullen and his pets. I mean, you miss, then you don't. Is it that hard to see when it's wrong? Is it an elf thing? <laughs> Most I know couldn't find an arrow sitting on it. Right. Maybe I just make it look easy and shy company. Fact still is, no teacher. Where would I find one in alleyways, anyway? <laughs> How about the basics? Where are you from? Ferelden. I got that from the accent. Where in Ferelden? All over? Okay, fine. Denerim for a bit. South, north, wherever I want. Oh, you're from wherever. I'm from north wherever. What? North wherever. Oh, we had fun on street and or in local tavern. Oh, hardy ha. Oh, funny you. It's complicated. I don't like complicated. Let's leave it at that. Maybe. You're not like most of the elves I've met. Thanks, right? Or was that an insult? Those could go barefoot and whine. Like that soulless, right? Never be as good as we were. Well, who's we? I'm just fine. I think there's more to it than that. 
A few thousand years more. Hey, someone wants to be angry about old debts, be angry. Be a terror that never lets an enemy forget. But if you're digging it up so you can wear it, that's just weird. I mean, the Dalish don't really know. They have stories, but that's all they are. It's all fancy dress, not history. We'll talk later. If you say so. I hear the refugees are doing much better now. The Inquisition has saved many lives. So we have gained the mages. Excellent. They should be able to seal the breach. You are certain you experienced time travel. Could it have been an illusion? A trick of the Fade? I've been to the Fade before. I'd know it. Point taken. What an amazing gift. It is vital the Inquisition succeed to avoid the future you witnessed. I'm surprised you're not more interested in your own future. I know enough. If that future happened, then I, and Cassandra, Cullen and the rest fail to stop this Elder One. Speaking of which, you should ready yourself. For? This Elder One. You have now interfered with his plans twice. Once at the Temple of Sacred Ashes, and now again at Redcliffe. A being who aspires to godhood is unlikely to ignore such an affront. How can I help? We'll talk later. Goodbye. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Hallam Shirel? Cows milking farmers? Give me time. I'm sure I'll surprise you. I suspect that's untrue. Unless you strip yourself naked and allow the Chantry to flog you into repentance. Now that would surprise me. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to, well, be like mages back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many mages back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the Sun. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed by inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinti, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities. Believe me. Of course you are. You're a discerning and intelligent woman, after all. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What did you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Tevinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. 
I decline the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... So much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinta is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Tevinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Tevinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree. But that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinter. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. Strange? Why are you less qualified to rule than some tart with a fancy crown? Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that Majors don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That Magisters are all Majors is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium, exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later, lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soparati, that's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new magisters, which means all the families buy madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. 
more importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinda legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor swords don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. There's an Imperial Charm Tree, isn't there? With its own divine. You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Charm Tree. Or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Charm Tree so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them, for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The Circles are in command. There are Circles of Magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well. But they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They don't use Lyrium. Ha! As if there'd be any left for them. They watch for abuse of magic, yes. But only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce their Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> We don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah blah blah. We feel better believing Andreste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the South declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So, the Imperial Divine is always a man? All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the South. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me. That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You are what we needed most at the moment we needed it. That's what they will say in ages to come. You don't seem like the religious soul, to be honest. If you define religious as sitting in a chantry and listening to a blithering hen tell you how to live, then no. If you define it as believing in the possibility that something larger than yourself exists, then yes, by all means. The world is bigger than I. 
even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. I should go. As you wish. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule it. The Inquisition appreciates your assistance in this matter, Lady Corbin. And my miners appreciate your business. You'll have your Illyrium by the end of the week. I should tell you, Ambassador, the Chantry raised some fuss when they learned about our arrangement. The Inquisition must certainly seem an audacious idea to the Grand Clerics. We hope to convince them it is a necessary one as well. I'll take my leave. Good day. Who is she, Ambassador? A merchant. I thought we should reach out to the Dwarves to secure Lyrium for the Inquisition's mages. According to Lady Corpin, it raised the ire of the Chantry. How? Access to Lyrium makes us rather more formidable than anticipated. We are becoming a challenge. Sadly, the remaining Grand Clerics appear to be consolidating the Chantry's power instead of comforting the masses. Mage circles started falling years ago. The Chantry was troubled even before the Divine's murder. Yet many people continue to bear it great love. We will not benefit from its decline. Little but the Chantry ties Orlais, Nevara, Ferelden, Antiva, and even Rivain to a common cause. Has the Chantry truly promoted such peace? And Rastis chant is familiar across kingdoms, a source of many shared customs. That is the crucial point. Common ground is the start of all negotiations. I suppose a shared faith can be useful when talking with strangers. Precisely. And these similar interests are merely where we begin. We must learn to think beyond our own wants to secure peace in Thedas. Planning to steer the history of the world, Ambassador Montelier. I believe the Inquisition is already charting that course. Which brings me to a question, if you have a moment. The remaining Grand Clerics sent a missive inquiring about the events at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. They demand to know whether the Inquisition officially claims that Andraste saved you from the breach. If it were up to you, how would you reply? I'd tell the Chantry that Andraste herself shielded me from harm. I'd truly like to hear the debates that would raise in Val Royo. Thank you for your thoughts. A good day to you. Thank you. My scouts are posted on the ridges, in case there's any trouble. Let's see what we have.
at your service. work. 